What's an abundance mindset? Mm -hmm. An abundance mindset is the belief that there is nothing truly scarce. So we grew up as a human species in scarcity. Mm -hmm. And our physiology and our, the way our brain is wired for scarcity. And so an abundance mindset, I'll give you two simple examples and go into more detail here. If I have an orange tree, I'm 5'5", I'm five five, I grab the oranges from the lowest hanging branches, all of a sudden, orange tree, oranges are scarce again until I invent a piece of technology called a ladder that gives me higher reach. And now I've got access to oranges again. If you've got a pie and you've got, you know, a family of four coming over for dinner, but then all your neighbors hear about it and they all come for dinner, mm -hmm. you have to slice the pie into thinner and thinner slices. In an abundance mindset, it's like bullshit. We're going to go bake more pies. Right. Right. So... Uh, the realization is technology is turning whatever used to be scarce into abundance. Another great example. We used to go kill whales on the ocean to get whale oil to light our nights, mm. right? Then we ravaged mountainsides to get coal. Then we drilled kilometers into the ocean ground to get oil. And now we're living on a planet that has 8,000 times more energy from the sun than we consume as a species in a year. Mm -hmm. 8,000 times. 2022 is the first year that we'll have more electricity added to the grid from solar than any other form. And so we're heading towards a squanderable abundance of energy, right? Fusion is coming down the line. And anyway, so the realization is there is nothing truly scarce. Does your mindset ever play tricks on you and go into scarcity, go into victim, go into... Of course, I'm human. I mean, and that's the default code. And so I need to get, I get myself out of it. Uh, like what's bugging me? And meditation mm -hmm. in the morning is a great way to, to yeah. do that. You know, an exponential mindset is we evolved in a local and linear world. Nothing changed, right? The life of your great, 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 great grandparents and the life of your great, 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 great grandchildren was the same, right? Over millennia, that was it. But today we're living in a world where we're, Technology is growing exponentially. Things are not changing century to century or decade to decade. They're changing year to year. And so an exponential mindset is understanding how computation, sensors, networks, mm -hmm. AI, robotics, 3D printing, synthetic biology, augmented, virtual reality, Web3, how all these technologies are just, are transforming what each of us can do in our lives. You know, when I teach that to entrepreneurs, it's a really important uh, to think about that. A longevity mindset we talked about. Mm -hmm. The moonshot. Um, a moonshot mindset is around the idea that, that the majority of the world is happy with 10%. Right? The majority of the world is like, huh, if I could get 10% more revenue or 10% lower costs, that's awesome. But we're living in a world today where you can go not 10% better, but 10 times better. We see this in our epic entrepreneurs uh, Astro Teller, who's the head of Moonshots at Alphabet, uh, gives a great example. He says, listen, if you're running a car company and you want to go from 50 miles per gallon to 55 miles per gallon, you could probably do that by light weighting the materials, maybe making your aerodynamic a little bit more, or changing the tires or a little efficiency. But if I ask you to go from 50 miles per gallon to 500 miles per gallon, you need to start with a clean sheet of paper and reinvent what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And when you think about what Bezos did with Amazon, what Larry and Sergey did with Google, what Elon's done with Tesla and SpaceX, those are starting with clean sheets of paper and reinventing the model. So we all can think about our moonshots. It's like, where do you want to go 10 times bigger when the rest of the world is happy with 10%? How does someone start reinventing 10 times bigger over 10%. So again, uh, I have a week worth of lessons on moonshot thinking in here. Part of it is realizing that the way it currently is done is not necessarily the only way to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's first principles thinking. An example I give in the blogs are when Elon went to go do Tesla, um, the batteries didn't exist and, and he they said- They didn't exist. The, well, the, the batteries at the price and the right. energy densities didn't exist to do this. And so he said, okay, well, how much should they cost? 
and then going and looking at the spot price for, for lithium and boron and the materials inside the batteries, realize that it can be, you know, an order of magnitude cheaper, but um, he'd need to do that, right? So just the way things are right now isn't the way they need to, need to be. He did the same thing with reusable rockets. And so you've got to be clear about your purpose. Mm. Uh, what I call, what I talk about is you need to know what your massive transformative purpose is. Mm -hmm. What is that thing that you connect with in your heart and soul that is like, you're not going to give up. So for me, my MTP early on was space. Um, it was Apollo and Star Trek got me going. And I wanted to become an astronaut so badly. I went to medical school, half to make my parents happy, other half because if I wasn't a fighter pilot, physicians were the next likely and when I learned about my chance of becoming a NASA astronaut, like one in a thousand, I mean, really, like very slim, I said, okay, I have to reinvent how to do this. And right. so- And you went to MIT and well, Harvard was, and yeah. anywhere top I was at, of everything. I was top, top of the schools. I read a book called The Spirit of St. Louis one day that Lindbergh flew from New York to Paris, not on a whim, but to win a $25,000 prize. Hmm. And on, as a result of that, uh, I said, I'm gonna create a prize for a private space flight. And so my moonshot became opening up the private space frontier. Wow. And uh, we did that. We had the a $10 million Ansari X prize for space flight. We changed the rules and regulations. Uh, you know, Virgin Galactic basically bought the rights to the winning technology. I've known Bezos for 40 years. Uh, that X prize sparked him, Elon. And so we lit the fuse on, on commercial space flight. Wow. And that was my moonshot. My moonshot now is, uh, is age reversal. How do I reverse human age by decades? Wow. Because I want to I, I wanna go to the moon. I want to go to Mars. I want to go and see another star system. When, if you could predict the exact day that you'll walk on the moon. Oh. What year? 2030 to 2032, that time frame. It's expensive still. You know, Starship will bring it down. I was just over at SpaceX. Uh, with the commercial space flight team there. And, you know, they're selling tickets to, the, to orbit and they're going to be selling... For like a quarter of a million or something, right? Or I know, well, that's on a suborbital flight. Uh -huh. or, orbit's 50 million right now. 50 but, million? Yeah. <laughs> sure, okay. Uh, and then there's something called the cislunar orbit, like Apollo 8, where you launch, you launch from the Earth and then you go out around the moon and come back. That's kind of cool. That's cool, yeah. How much and, that, how that's much gonna that be, cost? That's gonna, it's gonna be on Starship, and that'll be again 50 million. 50 million, 50 million. to go around. How long does it take to get to it's the moon? It's like three days there and three Total. days back. Yeah, so it's like a- So it's a week trip yeah. to go around the moon. You go around the moon. It's but not like, land on the moon. Not land. And so uh, that's, wow. attra that's attractive as, a, as an idea, right? When would that happen? Uh, a when couple are, years. People are gonna go around the moon in a couple years. Yeah, there's a, there is a Japanese client uh, who's already purchased the first Starship mission to do that. That's crazy. And he's, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. It's wow. crazy, it's great. So you think in 10 years, eight to 10 years, yeah. you'll walk on the moon? I think that's a good objective for me. And, and the question is, will I do a cislunar? I've got, I took a few companies public last year. I'm gonna wait for their stock price to go up. <laughs> if, you, if you, let's say you had to do this in, in five years, you had to walk on the moon in five years, what had would to. you had to? Like yes. it was, or your, or your life was over. Okay, yeah. What, what, what would need to happen from you to shift the mindset to accelerate this <clears throat> so in if, half the time? Elon is moving as fast as humanly possible. There's no question. I mean, the guy is brilliant off the charts. He's you know, there's a, there's a great Joseph Campbell quote uh, where someone is uh, driven as a man whose hair is on fire seeks water. Right. I love that image, right? Yeah, it's, it's, ah. it's like, where is it now? I gotta go. <laughs> and so uh, on, on SpaceX, and I've been there throughout his entire journey from roughly 2000, 2001, when he sold uh, PayPal to eBay to building SpaceX and what he's doing. He'll spend every penny he's got to make the human race a multi-planet species. Wow. And Starship, I remember I was with him one day back, I don't know, it was eight years ago, and he was really bummed. And I was like, what's up? And he goes, we just figured out that the Falcon 9 vehicle is not going to get us to Mars. 
It's not going to fulfill the mission. It's all about getting the human race to Mars. And we're going to have to scrap that and do something new. And he, he made that decision and Starship came out of that, right? So Starship is 10 times bigger. It's able to carry 100 people to orbit. Wow. It's able to, you know, it's a, a completely reusable, not just the first stage. It can land on the moon. It can land on Mars. And we'll be seeing it going to orbit this year. And that's the vehicle. That's incredible. That's, it's humanity's first real starship. That's incredible. Yeah. Not going to stars, but interplanetary ship. That'll go to the moon. Land on the moon go to, and go to Mars. Yeah, it's, it's designed and built to colonize. It can take 12 people to the Martian surface. When, when will it go to the moon? Uh, 2025. Wow. Three years from now. That's incredible. Yeah, it is incredible. If you're seeking power, I think it's empty unless it's in service of something. Mm. So what's your fundamental objective? You know, is it creating, uh, feeding everybody health care, energy, clean water? What are you going to use your power for? Getting power for the sake of power is empty and meaningless and yeah, just I think it makes for a very empty life.